Hello, this is RP Fridays number 34 and today with me, Veronica. I work as an RP developer in Robot ICT and I am also the one who sometimes brings new challenges for you on our community forum. Today, let's solve together our latest RPA challenge number 37 called Vendor Inventory. In this challenge, I involved creation of an app for an end user. I used UiPath apps and now I will share with you the solution of the challenge. You will see how to build a very simple app and connect it to your process step by step. It is necessary to create two main pages. First one, start page, and the second one, vendor page. Let's check it out. The first page, start page, has an header, some description and start button, which will trigger our first process. The second page, vendor page, has a container with a drop-down where the vendor's list will be displayed and below there is a table for the results. Once a vendor is selected, the second process will be triggered. As I am talking about processes, Let's take a look at them. I've made two processes. First one is for logging into ECMA system, downloading the Excel sheet with a list of vendors and subsequent reading and storing the information. In the ECMA system, it checks if you are already logged in. If not, it logs you with the credentials from orchestrator in the assets folder. As soon as you are in, it navigates the URL address for downloading the list of vendors. It's easier to use the page URL than to navigate via UI elements. Now it's waiting for download. This activity will also keep information about the recently downloaded file, for example the path. Useful is to ignore some specific temporary file extensions. Right now I'm using invoke method to run the other sequence. I think having it in different sequences it looks nicer and cleaner to understand what's going on in which part. You can see that argument with path to downloaded file is going from main in to the child sequence and array of vendors out from the child to the main. In this sequence I'm reading the downloaded Excel file and storing all the information in data table vendors. Now, from each row in DT vendors, I'm assigning their names and IDs to array for nice display in application. Do not forget to initialize array variables. So, this is it for the first process. The second one is navigating to the vendor's inventory page. Instead of choosing the right vendor from the drop-down, I will simply navigate the robot to the specific URL plus slash plus vendor ID number. Then just simply scrape the result table and store it in an out direction argument called extract to data table with an out prefix. Easy, right? So now let's go to the UiPath apps environment. Simply go to your orchestrator and on the left panel you click on apps. Start building a new app. Give it a name and click create. As you can see, you can explore some of the templates available or start from the scratch like me. By default, there is only one main page and let's rename it right now to the start process page. Continue with adding a control, which will be the header from the display section. Header called vendor inventory. As you can see, it is automatically changed in the title. In a style settings, let's make a header bigger and more visible. Now add a text label with a description what the user should do. And again, do a little bit of styling. And now what remains? The button. Let's change the layout of the main page to distribute and 
add more colors. Fine, now it's time for this drop down and select page. New page has been added and I will rename it to the vendors page. Here I use a container layout with two containers, one for the drop down and the other for the result table. The drop down will contain a list of vendors. I will add a bit more colors again. At first, publish your process to the orchestrator and see how to connect the process. Click at control drop down and here you can see the process. Search for your processes. On the right side you can see and double check all the arguments used within the project. Click add and here it is. New orchestrator with both processes is added. Back to our start process page. Select the Start button, see the tab Events, Create Rule, Start Process and voila! You are able to drag and drop your first process. Set it as unattended. And when it starts, I would like to display the spinner saying Searching for available vendors. And when it completes, hide the spinner. And I would like to take the user to second page. So I will choose open a page, which page, vendors page and the rest I will leave as it is. Now let's move to the other page where we will set the event for the drop down. What will be the source of data for the drop down? Our out array vendors argument from the first process which should be visible here. And chosen vendor will be an in argument for the next process, so drag and drop it simply. It will work as a trigger for the second process. So let's trigger the second process. Click, drag and drop the second one, choose unattended and I want it to show me a message when started saying inventory is loading with the title loading, just an informative in a button and I want it to disappear after 5 seconds. Now, once the vendor was selected, the process started and the table with the results will appear. So click to our table and type in a data source the equal sign at first. And now we see the resources panel and I'll choose the out extract data table that comes from the second process. Note, if you have not visible the columns so far, you should at first run the process from orchestrator manually, then refresh the process in an app and now it should be visible. Now you can choose which columns you want to display. I want to have this whole container visible only when one of the vendors from the dropdown is selected. You can do it by writing the expression to this hidden field. It will look like this. Choose the is blank and which variable is blank? This one in chosen vendor. And now we are ready to try how it works. Click preview and let the magic happen. Ok, looks everything is working fine. I hope the same on your side. If you have some questions, you can reach out for help to our community forum or just simply ask in the comment section below. You can also find a link to all source files in the video description. I am happy you accepted the challenge or at least joined this short tutorial to learn something new. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and consider subscription to our channel. It would mean a lot to us. So that's it from my side and see you in the next video. And as Roman says, happy automation!